Welcome back. This here article, I guess by Obvious Bicycle, was brought to us by Hacker News, so let's take a look. Um, so this is chess.com and leechess.org, uh, the two most popular chess servers on the internet. And this article, or blog, or whatever, is a feature-wise comparison between the two. And the author says they haven't mentioned features, which both websites have their best such as abundance of puzzles, UI customization options, and solid mobile apps. Um, so, yeah. I think also browser support is pretty key, because especially people accessing websites from educational institutions or other places that they don't have full control over the device and can't just install apps, um, that's uh, great. Or... I don't know if somebody who just naturally uses a browser on their phone because they figure they can manage their own security and don't want some third party installing software on their phone. So, how oh, chess.com is better apparently. Uh, neater chessboard UI. So, yeah, in the screenshots below, they use the default color squares and default P sets for both websites. It's not a fan of both default themes, and better ones are available, but these are the defaults. Um, gotta say, I do kind of like the coloring of these arrows. Uh, coloring of the arrows is kind of nice. Uh, the last square indicator, a bright gold there, stands out a little better than the spring green, but maybe for a colorblind person, this, I don't know, might not be so good. I'm not sure. I'm not colorblind, so I don't know, but yeah, this is uh, chess.com's UI with their uh, famous piece set. And here is Lee Chess's UI. Um, yeah, I like the way that the knight looks here. Looks slightly clumsier to me this way, but some people might prefer it this way to each their own. Um, hmm. Trying to think about this circle versus square highlight deal. I guess it's a matter of style. Um, yeah, in many cases, circles can be useful. Although, if you're drawing an arrow and then using a circle, that's kind of weird. Here, they are able to draw arrows but also highlight the squares, but they don't have a way to circle them. Uh, right clicks, selecting a square by right click colors the whole square, which is their preference. Right click here creates a circle, which isn't this author's preference. The night move tracking, again, this guy prefers the L shape because that's how you teach beginners how to use the knights. Here, I think this is a little less cluttered, but you know, to their own. Yeah, the tracking arrows, this is slightly thicker here. I think that actually serves the interface well at least for the bishop. Um, for this bishop, that, that's not perfect. Uh, for a knight, this feels okay. I'm not sure. But maybe, like, if you had an arrow cast across the entire board, maybe I'd feel strongly about having this really thick arrow, too. So, um, uh, it might just be my imagination, but it feels like this one is thinner than the knight one, but... I think that's just my imagination here. I think it's a proportion of the square. Um, well, the head of the arrow is quite large. And the base, uh, I don't know. So I guess that's why this feels thicker than this one feels. But either way, um, more distinct. Uh, Just.com, he says, yeah, I could see this color... This color, uh, at least to my eye, look, um, they stand out more. Whereas Lee Chess tries to focus on the pieces, here this tries to focus on things which aren't the pieces, even though the piece set looks pretty nice. Um, Four-player chess is point two on this list. Um, so I guess it's listing things that are in favor of chess.com, and this is number two, so... Um, it took a while before folks enjoyed the rules, but the rules sound kind of cool. Lee Chess has other variants, but so does Chess.com. Uh, games 
Yeah, they have more users, more people. Uh, well, their user counts are higher. I don't know, like, whether a user is somebody playing correspondence or something else. But the game does start quite quickly, or at least it feels like it does. Um, unleash us. Yeah, it can take a few seconds, sure. But I think at Just Icon it can also take a few seconds, it just doesn't feel that way. I'm not sure why. Um, but somehow it does feel a little nicer. Um, maybe just in the life of a software developer or somebody who, like, uh, deals a lot with computers, the notion of something animating to indicate your request, it's maybe a preference to not see the animation because it can really give you the same impression that other tools you work with uh, may uh, provide. Whereas on chess.com you click and depending what sort of thing you're seeking you might get a match faster or slower. Um, sometimes it could take forever depending on what you're looking for. Uh, chess.com plays a different sound for when you move, castle, and capture and check, which uh, they find satisfying. You know, Leechus has some good sounds and lots of options. Leechus could use better sounds, but a lot of them are quite good. Um, but yeah, chess.com offers more variety. Um, I think particular castling is something that most computer games related to chess offer a different sound for castling than every other move, and that's satisfying. I don't know about checking, like, okay, yeah, Chess Master does that, and I'd find that distracting, but others might like it. Um, but yeah, castling in particular could be kind of cool to have a sound for. Um, multiple pre-moves. Can't say I'm a fan. Uh, Lee Chess allows one pre-move per turn because, you know, that's how pre-moves on every other server work. It works well. Um... Arguably the one case where you might want more than one pre-move, and you probably still don't even want it then, is when you have to push a passed pawn that's completely unopposed in the endgame. Um, and I'd argue, like, if you're getting into that particular situation, and if that's making an enormous difference to your experience, perhaps consider playing with an increment. You're not going to enjoy playing without an increment. It's just... I don't know, people tilt a lot. Um, social media, both sites have t active Twitter handles. Uh, I guess I haven't really followed this so much, but apparently they like the memes that Chess.com's Twitter handle produces. And, I mean, on social media, I think that Lee Chess... Um, I mean, they're not so heavy on memes as far as I know. I do publish to my own Discord server uh, the tweets that they make, and a lot of them seem quite focused and relevant to what's taking place in the world. So, um, but yeah, it depends what your preference is. If you like memes, probably um, they provide more memes, if I had to guess. Yeah, Leech Us, 100% free. Not just in the aspect of uh, you could, like, play games and not have to pay money, but also you can download the source code, you can compile the source code, you could run your own server, you could redistribute your code to other folks, like, as long as you're following the license, and the license is pretty permissive. So, yeah, it's free in every way. Um, now, you could play on chess.com and not pay money. Um, you could also purchase things that are available on chess.com. So, Lee Chess doesn't heavily, like, uh, advertise. Well, they don't advertise in any way. But they don't, like, put front and center, hey, you can purchase coaching lessons and things like that. Um, so, not every feature is free. You can pay to have coaches coach you. The connection to, like, meet a coach, to, like, find who the coaches are, all that uh, insight advertising and discovery is free. But, um, yeah, 
most of the features, almost every feature on Lee Chess, you don't have to pay anything for. Uh, Post-game analysis on Lee Chess, uh, yeah. You can just request an analysis and Lee Chess will go off and do it for you. Um, so that's quite convenient. Um, uh, Chess.com, you could try Diamond or whatever, but yeah, eventually uh, you're going to have to pay money if you want services. I don't really have a very strong opinion other than this is convenient. But if this weren't convenient, I think both websites make it possible for you to download a game after you've played it. It's super obvious and easy to figure out how to download a game from Lee Chess. I'm not sure how you would download a game from chess.com, but I believe it's possible. And I think they've made downloading of games and uh, other content you've produced easier than it used to be. It used to be... I mean, I didn't, like, get heavily into blogging on chess.com because uh, it was just difficult at the time to export my own content. Ah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I thought so. So, uh, oh, sorry. Apologies. Uh, yeah. Uh, rule number one in that chat here is please don't post links, and unfortunately chess.com is a link. Um, it's more for other sites that I have the rule, but yeah. Thanks for the advice um, about, uh, yeah, it's definitely possible to extract your games from chess.com. I think it's probably only a few clicks away, I just could never figure it out. Um, but also, like, most of the games I've played on chess.com, I think, have been correspondence games. And so, like, I'd be, um, I don't know, thinking hard throughout the game. But then, like, once the game's over, I was done with it. So, um, yeah, I haven't really looked heavily into this game analysis stuff. But, you know, I, I'm not opposed to, like, game analysis online being a paid service. There's probably a correct rate for it. And the more websites there are out there that offer chess, um, the more likely that one of them will figure out the best way to do it. Uh, Lee Chess doesn't show ads. Yep. Uh, Lee Chess website navigation. Um... Yes, yeah, the site navigation on Lee Chess is good. Um, yeah, it's, if you know what you're looking for, it's not too hard to find it. If on um, Chess.com has lots and lots of bells and whistles, it can be hard to find the thing you're looking for. Uh, Lee Chess is more um streamlined so it's easier to find what you're looking for but it might not have a million bells and whistles um so let's see yeah on the chess.com they had some difficult experiences even as a software developer um let's see they don't understand the difference between new game play live chess um you know I think it's okay to have multiple controls for the same thing. For a while, Microsoft with Windows would it had experimented a lot with offering multiple ways to get to the same controls, and just eventually they probably found it difficult to support all these different features. But if you have users who are confused and need multiple different ways to find the same thing, that's okay. But it also underscores that maybe you have too many bells and whistles. Um, so the first time they played their friends and played four-player chess, it took them more than 20 minutes to start the game. <laughs> yeah, I, there are some things that are occasionally quite painful on Lee Chess, like, but um, most of the time things run pretty smoothly. Um, yeah, the website is responsive. Like, it looks more slick because the page loads faster. Because there's not a crap ton of adware and stuff through um, that are loaded. Um, 
yeah, playing a game with a friend. Things you want to do are all mostly easy to find on the homepage. Um, my main qualm on the homepage is like the leaderboard and all this is shown right down here. I don't know that the leaderboard is something that like 99% of players care about. Maybe they do. I don't know, but I would expect something else could fill the slot, but at this point I'm nitpicking. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the nav bar at the top, uh, navigation is obvious. You know, the navigation being on the top versus the left, I don't know it makes a big difference, but um, there's more intention behind each thing that's added here. And there's just a lot of content on the website, and, you know, that's okay. Uh, cleaner UI during the game. Yes, this... Oh boy. Um, so, here's what Lee Chess looks like during the game. So, there's a chat window on the left. There's information about the game. Uh, during the V2 release, we were thinking about doing away with this box, but then realized there was information we needed to show somehow. Maybe at some point in the future, this box might still go away. Um, but yeah, there's like this left banner with all these things you can click on. Lots of other, like you can see uh, other people playing games and tournaments and other information. And the chat window is right down here. It's not hard to find. Um... But I think what distracts me the most playing on chess.com is the location of the player names and clocks. I prefer the clocks not be right next to the game board. I prefer that I could make the board as large as possible, which probably involves moving the player names and ratings. Um, so, yeah, especially like the colors and names and stuff there get a bit distracting, and the ticking of the clock right next to the board is a bit irksome. But maybe if I was playing Bug House or Bullet a lot more, maybe I'd want things shown differently. Um, also, yeah, here you have player avatars, or a default avatar. Lee just doesn't need that, so um, it's quite minimal. Um, the draw and resign buttons are prominent. Now, wait, is the draw and resign button hard to find here? I mean, I guess so. I have no idea where it is, because most of the time, if you have a draw, it's through repetition. It's quite uncommon for players to just suddenly agree to a draw. Um, yeah. Uh, Lee Chess needs Grandmaster lessons and exercise. Lee Chess does have a video portal and a study portal. And I hope that someday we can find better and better ways to use it. Um, yeah, it'd be beyond our blog where we have Grandmasters analyze games. Um, and beyond our titled arenas, it'd be cool to have more content. But I think the study and video portals do have the content. It's just not the easiest to discover. So, like, videos and studies were added later. They don't have the same weight as other site features in terms of, well, I don't know. It'd be there are ways to improve it further from where it is. Oh goodness! Uh, I'll unban you again. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, unban. There we go. Yeah, take a look at their lessons. Yeah, I've taken a look. Um, I'm not super impressed, but it's cool that they offer it. Um, better business model on Lee Chess. It's a different business model. Uh, I like it a very much. I like um, also that like Lee Chess releases free software. So if you hate the business model, copy the code, make your own site. If you want a different game, you want to make like checkers, you want to make shogi, you want to make, um, there's a third one, I think. But yeah, there's other games based on the Lee Chess code base. It's a lot of work to make a separate project, a separate website, but it's doable. Um, but yeah, there are also many Lee Chess clones out there in the wild, and some of them are ad-based. 
So, hey, as long as they're publishing the source code, they're abiding by the license terms, whatever the license says, you know, it's permissive. Some people think they can do better. By all means, uh, go for it. Um, but yeah, uh, Leech Us yeah, relies on donations um, and goodwill. <laughs> Uh, the many volunteers who contribute to operations and to development, etc. Um, yeah, Just.com has a business model uh, through ads and membership fees. It's a company run by hundreds of people, sure. It's it's different. So it depends, like, what your preference is. Um, yeah, so, like I said, I like Leech House's model. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, I also like one thing that's not mentioned here is just Lee Chess's blog and stance on Twitter and elsewhere. Just being able to speak about things, even those that take place outside of Lee Chess. Um, so, like when the pandemic hit, and uh, Lee Chess observed that, hey, look, there's hundreds of people not wearing masks all at the air opening ceremony they're able to talk about that and there's tournaments and people withdrawing and like they keep us informed about what's going on uh, in the world there are other sources i follow but uh lee chess is doing pretty good um oh yeah i forgot yeah that's also excellent that it, the tools that are provided for collaboration with students one or more students like you could run classes it's awesome um the ability to study a game together is fantastic if you can find it uh, it takes a little training to find some of the more advanced features on the site but they're awesome um i guess it takes a lot of work to find things on chess.com but um yeah they have a lot of content too um so, yeah, this made it on Hacker News for reasons unlisted above. He wants to play four-player chess with friends, um, and he mostly, uh, unless he wants to play four players, he, he mostly prefers using Lee Chess. So, this is the opinion of Obvious Bicycle. Or, I'm sorry, this is the website Obvious Bicycle, the opinion of Shadesh. Um, I apologize i probably mangled it but i don't know how to pronounce sadesh but thank you for sharing this comparison we've taken a look at it let's go back to hacker news where we first found about this and people share all their opinions here and i like before this live stream had taken maybe 10 seconds to skim through this and i didn't really dive any further into it because um I thought it'd be more fun to explore that on the live stream. Uh, this is a bit hard to read, so look, can I zoom in on Hacker News? There we go. So, uh, one person, uh, Kriops, thinks Leech is far superior and for the polished UX, um, drawing the night moves. In general, the apps ahead on visual clarity, etc. Um, on the other hand, chess.com offers chess content such as courses, tournament coverage. Well, Lee Chess offers some, a lot of tournament coverage actually. Blogs, Lee Chess offers blogs, but yeah, there's a lot of paid content on chess.com. Um, but no, I guess maybe they're right that there are more blogs uh, by higher profile authors much of the time. Except when some major events going on and Lee Chess um, uh, gets great people to comment and live stream and blog and all this stuff about it and really does a great job covering major events. Um, yeah, so, but I believe there's uh, regular blogging that does take place on chess.com with a lot of people around the world. Um, uh, I don't know what they're paid to do it, but um, on the other hand, uh, Lee Chess focuses more on gameplay and analysis, 
And uh, everybody can publish studies, everybody can publish blogs, but not everybody does. So, um, yeah, I think blogging is going to improve LHS in the long run. Just might take a while. Um, so, what else is going on? Uh, just a kind of benefits from the collection of training bots with different strategies. Um... Well, okay, yeah, I have a slight issue or concern with Leech Us. So, Leech Us does have a list of bots. They're not super discoverable. They are second-class citizens, and rightly so. Uh, Maya is a fantastic research effort and is well-publicized by Leech Us, and rightly so. And the rest are mainly stockfish clones, although some people do original things. And if you put your bot on 24-7, other bots will play against it sometimes. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know why users select the stockfish levels to play against when their other bots are available. Although most of the other bots are stockfish. It could be interesting to have some way of featuring other quote personalities of bots or something i don't know uh, i'm not super attached though uh, if players really want that they can easily seek it out maybe i should write a blog post explaining where all the bots are um so let's see this is thoughtman i've been using this two products so um Let's see. Uh, the reason I keep slanting my points and slightly toward the other side, toward chess.com, is because on the internet, among folks that are somewhat technical in nature, there's a lot of support, a lot of excitement about uh, Lee Chess. So um, I'm not needing to repeat all that excitement because it's obviously out there. Um, Hmm, how to use special features for tutorials. I think a blog might serve better. Only because it's easier to read a blog than it is to watch an entire video or a series of videos about all the features. But that'd be kind of a fun um, experiment to see, like, to speed run uh, a tutorial, like production of a tutorial video explaining every feature on the site. I have some thoughts about who might be interested in that sort of thing. I can make that a speedrun category, talk about all the features on the site, explain it in a way that like folks can understand it. I don't know. It seems a bit subjective. How deeply would you need to explain a feature for folks to get it? Um, so, it's just as customizable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've written some user styles and user scripts that change the experience quite a lot. I also like that um, there's, in the past, Leechus has done a lot of work to better support uh, the interface for accessibility. So for colorblind or even blind people, it's uh, Leechus has cared, and I think will continue to care in the future, that everybody is able to have the best possible experience. I think that's quite important. Um, okay, so yeah, they comment on the other person's comments. Um, yeah, it's easier to win endgames on Lee Chess because uh, Lee Chess does not deduct time for every pre move. Anakin Evader. Yeah, thanks. For this point, yeah, I think it depends what you're looking for. Uh, the response time seeking a game depends, like, what you're looking for. Might also depend where you're located in the world. I don't know. Um, we just has different sounds for captures. That's true. Um, but, yeah, I think a sound for castling probably should be done. Um, so, let's see. Oh, Zen Mode is fantastic, by the way. I think uh, chess.com introduced focus mode 
Um, I don't know if focus mode has a key shortcut the way Zen mode, you just hit the Z key. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so, oh, somebody's written travel head has written extensively on rapid cheating. I, you know, I try to stay out of this, but yeah, Lee Chess's detection algorithm is open source and therefore more scientific. You don't just like invite one expert in and then declare things scientific. Like I would believe this very easily from Travelhead. I'd be very easily persuaded that he's correct, but I don't know. And I don't have enough information, even if I read his article, it's almost certain that I can't vet that article because I just don't know. I do know that the detection system is extremely good on, well, it's extremely robust. Uh, there's every hope that the, uh, the detection system works well. Um, and I guess, yeah, one way I know that is uh, within a couple years ago, I proposed you make a change to ratings on LeechS um, regarding people claiming that people are like sitting on the leaderboard and that new folks would come in, win a handful of games, and then be able to sit on the leaderboard playing only a few games. So um, made changes to the rating system such that a person's rating could get much more established to get on the leaderboard therefore you would need more games played and need to be playing more regularly which i think weeded out the cheaters that were on the leaderboard uh, at least i haven't seen any recently um is it possible to restrict played games for an account let's say an account belongs to a child um so that's interesting. Um, hmm. Short of changing the password, like every time, no, I don't think there's a way right now to do that. I think LeechS has recommended uh, browser side plugins be used for that sort of thing. If you don't want a child using the website too much for too many hours or whatever, um, that that's more easily managed in the browser. I have my own opinions, but I think implementing things in the website, uh, smart kids can figure out how to circumvent some of them, uh, either with a guest account or anonymously or a second account or something like that. So it'd be challenging to set up something and ensure that it works correctly. Um, I would, I have thoughts about ways to further improve the site experience. And that is one of the things I think might eventually be useful to have on Leech Us. Some way to like have responsible gaming. Um, but then it brings up the question of, well, how much is too much if a person like loses a game in five moves um, or your opponent loses in five moves, does that count toward your five games for the day? I could see things getting complicated, but um, yeah. Yeah, so here Dragon Tamer recommends uh, Skid versus PC for game uh, chess analysis. Um, I'm aware of another interface, uh, Nibbler, that is developing rapidly and I'm almost about to endorse it because it's a beautiful interface um, but I don't know if it supports everything that's required to like pull your games easily from Leech Us but Skid versus PC is the gold standard right now for free software for building your own database of your games um, so a lot of people do like this sort of, I'm going to download my games and have a copy of them forever and not have to worry about connecting to the website and having to click through things and be able to like access the database directly and write their own tools against it. That's fair. Um, 
So let's see. Um, but yeah, it's super convenient to be able to analyze games on the fly. Um, also, <laughs> uh, you know, Lee Chess is free software. They give credit to the engine authors. Like if somebody were to, say, develop a crazy house chess engine, and then that engine were used for in-browser game analysis, you know, Leeches would give credit and say like, hey, this is the fairy stockfish or multivariant stockfish or one of those sorts of things. Leeches would actually credit the engine author, whereas uh, chess.com would tell that author to fuck off. So, you know, um, that's just my opinion. I mean, anyway, um, so it's good that one site, like, I don't know, cares about uh, the folks who contribute um, to the free software ecosystem and cares about licenses, and the other doesn't really deal with folks, like, accusing and impersonating um, even the group people have made their website possible. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's, I guess, mostly just my opinion. Uh, let's see, what's the latest comment? Oh, goodness, really? Um, sorry, wow. Uh, my mistake, I was almost certain, no, I was certain, that um, my bot tolerated leechess.org in all of those URLs. I apologize for that, because my bot recently got nuked. I had to reinstall it from scratch, and so it lost all of the white link uh, URLs. So I have to refigure out how to reconfigure that. Sorry about that, but yeah, you were linking to um, leechess.org slash learn. Um, yeah, no, that's... Uh, well... There's a lot of thoughts. Uh, there's an immense backlog of things that Leeches could change. Um, it's probably not going to change overnight, if I had to guess. Um, but also, it's quite good as it stands right now. It's quite excellent overall. A few things that are good as opposed to excellent are maddening because they're not all excellent. Um, yeah, the standard Lee Chess is quite high. Um, also, switch Lee Chess after playing on chess.com for years. He switched to an iPhone, and the app for chess.com obliterated his battery. Maybe they fixed it. Maybe not. It's hard to support iPhones. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um <laughs> I hope that chess.com fixed their issue. There's no sense in burning the rainforests and such just so people can play online. I remember after a tournament completes, there was one live streamer whose um, OBS would melt down um, because uh, the tournament confetti used a lot of CPU power and I rewrote some of the confetti script to be like, I don't know, 20%, 30%, something more lightweight. I forget exactly how much, but it would, his computer would no longer melt down after a tournament finished and confetti was shown. And confetti looked exactly the same as it did before, it just uh, performed better. Um, so that was really funny. Um, is there a place where you can upload a bot? So on Leechess you can do this. I wonder if it's possible on chess.com too. Yeah, it's definitely possible on Fix. I used to do it there on Fix. Oh no, there's many idle CPU accounts on Fix waiting for an opponent. Huh. That's unfortunate. Um. Yeah, so... We're getting lower and lower in the comments section. We're most of the way through it. Uh, you don't care about design UI UX. Uh, select at random, uh, etc. Okay, as of today, I've done one puzzle and one lesson. 
They played 79 games on Lee Chess, 1716. They always end up on chess.com because there are enough people. So, yeah, it really, I think it depends what you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, I think it varies a lot. I think on Lee Chess, like, sometimes the seek time for, like, the 2 plus 1 pool or 5 plus 3 or things like that. Or three plus two can take a little bit, uh, but if you're seeking one zero, it's pretty quick. Um, it's just a matter of who's out there. Uh, OGS is amazing, the online Go server. Although I'm a bit infuriated that they've changed their rating formula yet again, from the thing that I thought was amazing to something that I'm less impressed with. Um, but yeah, the lower we get down in this, oh. They see the chess cube is gone. Yeah, chess cube was an interesting concept. Um, unfortunately, can't compete with other services which do similar, so that's rough. Um, honestly, the name chess cube is probably what uh, they would rebrand it and taken a different URL. Maybe they could have survived, but that's uh, hard. Uh, they'd like to see Shangi on Lee Chess. Yeah, there's PyChess.org. Yeah, the cool thing about Lee Chess is like people are inspired by it and produce um, sites that uh, use the same chess ground tool for showing games, um, but might have the rest of the site written in a different language that's easier to code in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure that enlisting grandmasters for everything is the right way to go for a Lee Chess, though. It would take a lot of payment to folks, I think, to produce top quality content. Uh, let's see. People have emotional attachments uh, or philosophical attachments to Lee Chess. I mean, it's free. <laughs> it's free, it's clean, there's no ads. Honestly, like if chess.com were to remove the ads or like tone it down 95% of the way and I not give me anywhere near as many ads to get there, I might use both sites, but they're just way too many ads for my like. But, um, but yeah, there are advantages to paying for stuff too. Uh, some people like the fact that like you analyze a game on chess.com It'll put other punctuation for, hey, you played an awesome move. Um, some people like that. It might not be accurate, but it might be. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, I'm curious in the years to come what exactly would come of both sites. And perhaps other sites will enter the fray too. There's probably room for more. Um, but it's hard to get established, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, thanks to Hacker News for bringing this uh, Medium article, or Substack article, my mistake, uh, to our attention. Thanks to Sadesh for writing this and inspiring this conversation. Um, and yeah, I hope in the future there'll be more collaboration between free software sites uh, in terms of, I don't know, player profiles extending across multiple sites, having policies for players banned on one site to alert the other site that, hey, we just banned this guy. Um, I'm not sure exactly where all that would lead. I would not want to tie in accounts with, like, social media. I would not want any site to be based on Facebook or Google or anything like that. I want them to have their own free software identif identity provider, which I guess by default would just be Lee Chess because Lee Chess is awesome. But yeah, being able to link my same profile on other websites to my Lee Chess account would be cool. Um, having streamers that would play on multiple sites, having simuls and tournaments and other things that somehow span I think it could grow a large community and support many different things, but it might also be difficult from a tax or political perspective to 
make anything like that happen, so maybe that's just a pipe dream for now. Anyway, hope we enjoyed this little comparison here, and you know, thanks to uh, Sadesh for making this possible.